Thank you for those who have sent in questions for this week's podcast episode. As much as we try to help you, this week's sponsor is probably going to help you a lot more, and that's BetterHelp. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists that can help you on a wide range of issues. BetterHelp is perfect to offer dating advice, which a lot of you guys had questions about. Adriana and I use BetterHelp and we use it as a couple, but you can sign up as an individual or if you're in a relationship or have a partner, you can sign up as a couple as well. Here's how to get started on BetterHelp. Just answer a few questions about your needs and your preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. And if your therapist isn't the right fit for you for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. One of the things we personally love about BetterHelp is you get the same professionalism and quality as if you were going to go to an office therapist, but there's more flexibility with your schedule, there's more options. So if you guys want to try BetterHelp, go to betterhelp.com slash gaywomen and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash gaywomen. You can also find the link in our video description. Hey everybody, welcome back to our podcast, Help, I'm Gay. Because you guys need a lot of help. And we're here to help you. Gays, we need lots of help, okay? We all go through the same shit, and we all need help with it. Yeah, like honestly, most of the questions we get, I'm like, yeah, I've been through that. Like there's been a few that are very specific but (laughs) most of them in general you have a personal experience i have a personal experience with it (laughs) so thank you guys for tuning in again if you don't know i'm sarah i'm adriana and now you know we also create content on youtube for the gay women channel so you know our resume for answering these questions is 10 years of youtube experience and 36 years of being a lesbian so we asked you guys to ask us questions tell us your problems things you need help with tell us your your gay issues and what you need advice on and you know even if we can't give advice we're gonna read your questions and everybody's gonna get to hear it and you know what be relatable and you know what maybe sometimes too it helps if like us reading your question back to you if you're like maybe i'm in the wrong now that i'm hearing it I it's me I'm the problem (laughs) yeah sometimes you hear it in your head you're like okay all right all right that sounds good and then when you hear it back sometimes or you say something out loud to your friend yeah and you're like I I see I understand what I sound like I see Mm -hmm. I see now what you see yeah I'm embarrassed (laughs) saying this so I feel like I need to change my actions but you know that's how you know who your real friends are and we are your real friends because oh we'll call you out if we think you know what if we think you're the problem we will call you out on it but also that you feel open enough to send us these questions in the first place true so thank you guys yeah we're blessed by um our cat sadie is joining us today she's not purring but if she does purr i'll be sure (laughs) to reposition the microphone she's just like i want to sit with you and chill but like i don't you might like you that much talking too much that she'll get annoyed no we were gone all day she missed us oh that's true yeah she did miss us she mi- she's a siamese she's half siamese and um she gets lonely so if we are gone for a while like we come home and she's like at the door waiting and it's really mm. cute and sad and then she is just like attached to our hip the rest of the night She's All right. so cute. And that, okay, like, I'm so sorry. We talk a lot about Sadie. Yeah. She's the biggest thing in our lives. Like, it's yeah. all I want to talk about. What did you want to say about her? Or was well, that the... That was what I want. Oh, okay. I just want... I just like talking about oh, okay. her constantly. Okay, I thought you had and another, no. another fact queued up. No, I'm just saying that we talk about her a lot. <laughs> Today's episode, we are dealing with the topic of where are the gays? How do you make friends? How do you meet a girl? Where is everyone how do you meet how people in do general you meet gays where are the gays if i don't leave my house do people come to me you got questions we got answers let's we are so publicly queer like i feel like you can't be more out and open than we are i feel like i can name 
10 YouTubers off the top of my head that are more gay and open than we okay, are. Okay, all I'm saying, <laughs> when you make a YouTube channel and you're on the internet talking about how gay you are. No, it's true. Like, I forget. We are out. Like, I, I think I've said this before, but like, we'll be somewhere and like a friend's new boyfriend is like, hey, I've seen your YouTube videos. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot him on the internet. And anyone, anyone can, watch, can it. watch it. And I'm like, don't watch it, though. Why are you watching? <laughs> but I feel like a lot of finding the gays is like putting yourself out there and being out in the community. But then it's even hard for us to find the gays. No, it's easy for us. So what you have to do is start a YouTube channel, get 500,000 subscribers, then go out to a relatively queer space and they'll find you. I feel like maybe when you're older, because you're more picky about your friends, like when you're younger, just meeting another gay is enough reason to be friends with them. You're like, we're friends now. I guess. You're gay. I'm gay. Let's do this friendship. (laughs) Then when you get older, you're just like, we have nothing in common. Your criteria is a little more specific. Yeah. Or you know what? Just you got to rather you have criteria. You have standards. Whereas before you did not have any criteria. No, exactly. (laughs) Okay, question number one. Okay, it's coming in from Bailey. How do you make more queer friends? I literally live in San Francisco, one of the gayest cities out there, and I'm still struggling to find myself a little gaggle of gays to frolic with. I've got a friend group, and that's nice, but it's mostly filled with cishet guys with girlfriends. Also, I've been watching you both since I was in middle school, and I love you to bits. I wouldn't have ever been able to be so comfortable with my sexuality now if I hadn't had your videos to watch. Thanks for everything. Bailey, thank you very much. Thank you. That's really sweet. That's so sweet. So many people who have trouble making gay friends live in big gay cities. Do you find that to be true? Because it's hard to make friends in a big city. It's easier to make friends in a smaller town because people are more friendly. It's a community. They want to be part of that community and be close to other people and like reach out. But in a city, like no one wants to talk to anyone else. You have like clicks in your groups and you're not actively like looking to hang out with anyone else or meet new people. It's like lonely being in a big city. Yeah. But what do you think it is about? gay people specifically because we all want to meet more gay people so many queer people want more queer friends want to meet people and then they live in these big gay cities and it's hard it's it's not like maybe necessarily clicky people that no i don't want to hang out and don't want to talk to you and can't be bothered because we all want to find it this is what is this what the l word has done to us we want our l word gang we all want an l word and i don't even know if it's a real thing but it's true that's what we want um, I don't think it's a terrible idea to try and find friends online on like a dating app because I think you can have it set to friends and then you, you can find, must right even in your profile just write that you're looking for friends yeah or like you know friends to do fun activities with and like list some activities or let's be real most lesbians on dating apps anyways are like looking for a lover and then you find a friend because you're like oh (laughs) everyone just wants to be friends you connect with so many people that you just end up being friends with exactly you're like well we can't get to the dating stage because that's too scary so let's just be friends (laughs) i guess but also i think it's easier um because it's not as scary being on like a dating app to find a friend because you're like there's no pressure i just want friends i'm not like oh i gotta meet this person yeah i have to look really good and like i have the, to make sure yeah. i really like them the only thing maybe that matters are your interests yeah exactly and you can get you 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 can um screen for that immediately <laughs> so. yeah you don't have like i don't know 10 plus criteria for a friend you're just like i don't like camping do you like camping can't be friends <laughs> otherwise exactly you're good do you like movies i like movies we'll go see a movie yeah so simple but i feel like there are so many gay people that are looking for friends um especially like in big cities that in a dating app is way better in a big city dating apps are terrible mm. in like smaller cities and towns and you're like why is the closest person a hundred miles away from me so your advice for big cities is 
potentially online online a dating app and then your advice for small cities is like go out in person go out and find the gays find the gays yeah or the gay get your gay get blow horn one. out scream you're a wanker number nine and then see <laughs> who comes at you i also don't think you need a friend group that is just primarily lesbians i kept saying lesbians but i'm like you need a good like lgbt group mm-hmm. you need a mix of genders yeah you need some gay men Oh, yeah. You need some gay women. You need some bisexuals. You sure. need pansexuals. You need everyone but to make a good friend group. You get your gay guy friend and just take him anywhere and he will find yes. you whatever you desire. I think it's the easiest to make a gay guy friend. It seems that way, doesn't it? Yeah. And you if- know what? If you have one straight girlfriend, they know a gay guy. 100%. Yeah. Oh, my God. Especially in San Francisco, please. They probably he- know 10. The other thing, I guess, because San Francisco and like lesbian cities, I feel like now there's so many LGBTQ specific events going on. Like you don't have to go to the gay bar in the gay village anymore. The- you don't have to wait for pride. Yeah, I see so many events that maybe just drag check brunches. Out- <gasps> oh, drag brunch. Go to drag brunch. Yeah, that's fun. And then just sit with a random group of people. <laughs> But yeah, look up maybe just queer events in the city. Like once a month events, one-off events. There's so many different things and they're not always centered around like drinking and partying. They also have uh, queer sport leagues as well if you're into Mm. sports. Mm -hmm. You'll meet a very specific type (laughs) of queer person there. But if you're into sports, that's also a good way. Next question is from Sophie. We're we're going on the, the similar yeah same I think lines. Uh, yeah where are the gays where are the gays how do I meet other gay women I'm 26 turning 27 and I'm struggling in the romance department I live in the GTA and went to a large liberal university for five years you would think meeting people would not be that hard and yet here I am never having been in a relationship still a virgin and unable to figure out what I'm doing wrong I've tried online dating. Basically every app, going to queer women events, joining clubs when I was in university, going to university LGBT events, just going out to regular bars and pubs, hanging out with my friends, seeing if I happen to meet someone new, asking friends to set me up, matchmaking. I mean, at this point, I've tried it all. And my circle of queer friends is not especially large, so I can't just date them either. So any advice for places or methods I can try out in the GTA to try and finally break my lifelong dry spell? Listen, Sophie, you just listed every possible way for everyone (laughs) listening to this podcast how to meet slash date other lesbians. I need to know if Sophie (laughs) is actually not meeting a single gay or if they are just very picky. Maybe just very picky very particular because um home boy or girl is in our hometown of the gta gta is toronto greater toronto area and um lots of queer spaces lots of queer events lots of queer people like toronto is a pretty big gay hub and and they've tried it all sophie just listed every single possible way I don't have anything to add on where where else do you go? I think this is a if if it's going to happen it's going to happen type of situation. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. And you know what I love? Here's and the you, thing. And it will happen. When you're young, you say things like I'm 26 turning 27. Yeah. So you're young, you got there's lots of time. When you tell don't people stress. how old you're turning, it's because you're young. <laughs> I'm like I just turned 36 4 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a friend and we've briefly mentioned her before, but she actively dated for a whole year until she found Two her years. Two years. Two years she online dated like it was an actual job. And I know that's really stressful for everyone listening that's having trouble dating and having trouble finding someone that you're like, oh my God, this could take two years. But also she would go through spurts where she'd be like, that's it. I'm not online dating. I deleted my profile. Mm -hmm. And then she wouldn't be on the app for like two, three months. And then she'd be like, I'm bored. I'm going back on. I'm trying Bumble this time. I'm trying Hinge this time. I'm trying. So and then she would try different apps. But she kept at it 
perseverance. <laughs> so Sophie. Yeah. Perseverance. <laughs> Keep doing it. You will not find friends if you quit. That's true. Right. Friends or dates. It's not going to happen if you just give up. I don't know. In a big city is a place I feel like it's the time where you can say, I'll stop looking. Like maybe, maybe, maybe the only thing she hasn't done is stopped looking. Try it for two months. Try it. Maybe it'll come to you. Yeah. And and if that doesn't work, just everywhere you are, be open to meeting new people, talking to new people. Get a shirt. Make a shirt that says, I'm queer. Are you interested in me? <laughs> This question is from Tori. And just a reminder, all of these names we've made up. (laughs) I want to ask out a friend of a friend who I find super fun and is extremely attractive and gives me such gay vibes. The problem, I'm not sure if she's gay, but our mutual friend and I think she might be. I asked her once if she dates women and she said, I'm not sure and quickly changed the subject. To me, this is evidence that she's probably questioning but hasn't come out to herself. Like I said, I really want to ask her out and our mutual friend thinks we'd make a good couple. But since I'm not sure about where she's at in terms of her interest in dating women, I've hesitated to ask her because I don't want to make her uncomfortable. Am I overthinking this too much? Should I just ask her out? Send help. 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 Ugh, women are so like just sensitive. They're like, I think she's questioning and I don't want to bother her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would ask her out and then you will find out for sure. If she's into you That's or not. really the only way. It's the only way to know. To make sure. It's the only way to see if someone's gay. Kiss her. Don't do that. <laughs> she, she, Tori doesn't even want to make her uncomfortable by asking her out. <laughs> Okay, everybody's like a little gay now. Well, everyone is a little gay. Everyone. Absolutely. So there's a good chance she's a little gay. Yes. But the question really is, is does she want to date you? Yeah. And that you won't know unless you ask her out. Exactly. If you're worried about like making things weird and ruining your friendship, that's when you have to figure out like what's more important. Well. But I think if you're like, no, I just want to date this girl, then just ask her out. She's also a friend of a friend. Oh, then yeah. Just ask her out. Yeah. Go for it, Tori. And then let us know how it goes. Disclaimer, um, we are not responsible for how your personal relationships. We have too many disclaimers on this podcast. Every episode, we're like. We are not professionals. We are not responsible for the outcome of your life. (laughs) Good or bad? No, good. Yes. (laughs) Absolutely good. We will. We will. If Tori and this woman get married, we'll take credit. Exactly. If she never speaks with you again. Not our fault. (laughs) So your advice is just go for it. Yes. I don't think she'll feel uncomfortable. It's like if a guy asks me out, I'm not going to feel uncomfortable. Maybe don't ask her out. Yes. Maybe, Maybe have your friend just like it's your friend's friend. Ask your friend to be like, ask, like talk to her about it. Is she gay? Like, is she gay? We just ask her out. I don't think no one's going to be, like, offended if you ask them out. Mm-hmm. No. Also, you'll maybe feel flattered that you're like, oh, you like me. I don't date women, but thank you. It's very optimistic. You would never. Would no, you well, just ask somebody no, out no, no, you didn't even know if they were gay? I am a demisexual Mm -hmm. so i need to be friends with the person for eight years before developing any romantic feelings and then i can ask them out this is tori right tori but maybe tori has been friends with her for a long time you don't she didn't say how long i think at that point if it was a long time she would know if she's gay or not Mm. you think it's a new i think it's someone new that's why i'm like just ask her out just go for it rip the band-aid off what's one way what's a guaranteed way at this point to find out if she's a little gay well, we can't use the ask if you think Kristen Stewart's yeah. gay because... Maybe just hang out with her one day. Share so many of your gay interests. Ask if you think Taylor Swift's bisexual. <laughs> Maybe that's the new one. I think if you just share your gay interests, there's so many gay shows and like gay artists and there's so many things right now. Just share some gay things you're interested in and well, see if she's into she any must, of them. This girl must know that Tori's gay though. Yeah, but no, but... 
see if she's interested in the things you're interested in. But I think also like uh, straight women can probably also be interested in like gay things now because every, everything's so gay now. But straight people aren't into it the same way. Well, like, you know, straight people you... aren't going down a Reddit rabbit hole of Taylor Swift lyrics. Exactly. Yeah, but maybe you can just, get in a just whole say, big, just say gay a, lore, wait, just say you, gay no, lore. No, you can get in a whole big topic about Taylor Swift and see how she steers a conversation talking about Taylor Swift. And you could totally know. If you say, do you believe in gay lore? And she's like, n- even knows what that is. She's gay. You got a good shot. Yeah. <laughs> Ask her out. Your next question should be, do you want to go for dinner? <laughs> Exactly. Then you know if she's into you. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Solved. <laughs> Last question from Laura. 25 and I feel like I've been single forever. Any words of advice slash comfort? 25 is so young. You are a baby, Laura. It's you have also 75 more years of life to be single. You are called a baby dyke. A baby dyke. You're <laughs> so young and precious also um looking back at my life sarah i love you more than anything in the world and we've been together a very long time thanks babe i would do it all over again with you but sometimes i also wish that i just had a lot of fun in my early 20s and i feel like you would say the same that you're like yeah i wish i did a lot of women knowing though that we would still end up together be like let's go have some fun in college meet back after you know what right i'm gonna be honest with you i disagree with you (gasps) because now you make me look like a terrible person (laughs) because i'm so happy yeah i am too wait i'm so happy with our life and our relationship that i wouldn't change anything and we're at such a good place that if i'm like oh i feel like i missed out on a certain thing and like we should just have fun like we could just still have fun we're not oh that's true 100 years old yes no that's true we're not 100 we yeah, can still you we can, can still go take our little break and go have some fun no not even if you don't want to but i'm just saying like you don't have to feel like you miss out or regret things because life is long and there's always time you can always yeah. do it the common theme of this podcast is have the conversation well i'm just saying um like at 25 like go just own being single because when you do get into a relationship, then you're like in that relationship. And sometimes you're like, oh, I could have had, could have had so much fun when I was like single before. Laura, and I- just like go do lots of dates, get, have lots of friends, go do whatever you want to do when you want to do it. Because you'll have time to be in that relationship. It will happen. Because Laura, there are two options for being a lesbian. Option number one is be single forever. And option number two is be in a long committed 10 plus year relationship. (laughs) There's kind of no in between. I I think the in betweens are rare. (laughs) Like the people that will have like a two year relationship, a six month relationship, then be single for a year, then have another year relationship. Yeah, it's true. There's either like serial monogamy or single (laughs) forever. So enjoy it. Have fun. Don't stress too much because you're young. You're so young. (laughs) Because if you eventually want a relationship, like it'll happen eventually it will you put yourself out there if that's what you really want Mm -hmm. it will happen but you are young so like just date and have fun any words of comfort while she is single words to comfort her Uh, no like words to comfort her are just like you you are young so don't worry it's gonna happen eventually you'll find the one and just have fun and like enjoy being single because if you're going to be miserable being single you're just like you're gonna be miserable for just like a part of your life and you don't need to be it could be fun being single like think about it you get to do whatever you want to do when you want to do it oh those are those are sweet real words of comfort i was gonna say like kate blanchett loves playing a lesbian (laughs) what does that have to do with comforting Knowing that Kate Blanchett loves playing. Le- Did she say that or you just, you know, because she just keeps playing lesbians. That one. <laughs> that, I mean, it's true. It's comforting to me because I know she will play a lesbian again. Is she's ri- she's too convincing. Is Kate Blanchett's husband a beard? Because like, what's that about? But they have children. So I, know. I don't know. 
But why does she keep playing lesbian? Because she loves it. She lo- listen. She loves our but attention. But she is so you're right. She's let so me, convincing. No, let me give you a fact. Okay, that's a fact. I don't know this. Is it an opinion? I don't know this, but so it's not it's a, a fact. Kate <laughs> Blanchett loves our attention. All you have to do is watch her at any red carpet event, any press interview, any award show. She's always dropping in queer innuendos touching sandra bullock <laughs> oh, looking yeah. at kristen stewart's eyes yeah what's her this deal? it's it's she always wants that queer photo op she loves loving us and here's and the getting thing. love back no one's mad at her for playing a lesbian no. when she's an apparently straight woman because she's so good at it they're like let her play gay did i mean do not take this from us if she wants to play gay in anything give it to her if i lived like in a cave with lesbians and was not exposed to the outside world like like plato and you drop me in front of tar and i watched lydia tar there is no way you could convince me that wasn't a lesbian no i know oh my god the um like even lesbians don't exude as much lesbian energy as kate blanchett does it's insane Kate Blanchett could play like Margaret Thatcher and be like oh I didn't know Margaret Thatcher was a lesbian she's like she was after she played Lydia Tarr it's it's really hard to wrap my brain around that she is not like Sarah Paulson what do you mean that she's like this Sarah is, Paulson? no just that she's be like out and super gay Oh, I know. I just, uh, okay, she, honestly. She, she's friends with Sarah Paulson. I just see her as a gay it. woman. I don't even, Kate <laughs> Blanchett in my mind <laughs> is just a gay woman. <laughs> yeah. Even like watching her interviews. I watch on like hot ones where the where they eat hot wings. And yeah. I'm like, this is a lesbian eating hot wings. <laughs> I don't care how good of an actor you are. You cannot play Lydia Tarr. It's the energy. Like, there's no way. She's either... Something's going on we don't know about. She's on the spectrum. Or she's the greatest <laughs> actress. The greatest living <laughs> actor of all time. And not all time, like, to this time. Not this generation of all time. I'm including the future. <laughs> all of time I, you know what i don't disagree <laughs> what a tangent i saw a post with pictures of lydia tar and like literally pictures of her like the pictures where she's like sitting at a restaurant table like not even really doing anything and the post was like you know her strap game is fire <laughs> <laughs> and like <laughs> she was so good in tar that <laughs> I was, it was like I was watching a documentary. Like, she was just, I'm like, it wasn't even Kate Blanchett anymore. It was just, I'm like, this is a woman named yeah. Lydia Tarr <laughs> who is a really big flaming lesbian. A fun um, date night with your lesbian friends. Do a double feature movie night and watch Carol and Tar, And it will be gayer than you having a gay movie night. <laughs> yeah oh boy all right okay well that's it those are all the questions um hopefully we gave some advice to help you people find some friends find some love and or just enjoy being single because you're (laughs) young (laughs) enjoy it (laughs) there's so much time to be old that's the thing too right is like we're like, oh my God, I'm 25. And you're like, but you're going to be old for so long. Like when you're 60, which I would consider like maybe not even old anymore because I'm we're mm-hmm. halfway there. But like 60 <laughs> to 100, which you could easily live to is 40 years. Well, if you're 25 right now, you are you could live your whole life over again starting at, starting at 60 years old. Yeah. And then you'll be 85. I, well, exactly. Exactly. Ooh. So... Life is long. Being young is short. Oh. 
well it's true no it you're only true. like young for like so such a short period of time mm-hmm. like why don't stress about it enjoy it it's only we could benjamin button it like what oh. a way to that's the way thank you for listening to our podcast help i'm gay where we help the gays where we help the gays with help about being gay about things other than being gay but problems because you are gay <laughs> All right. Uh, well, tune in next month. We'll have a new episode out. Um, and follow us on YouTube at the Gay Women Channel. Follow us on Twitter at the Gay Women Channel. Follow us on Instagram at the Gay Women <laughs> Channel. It's only our podcast that's called Help I'm Gay. Yeah. I'm Sarah. I'm Adriana. And thank you for listening.